stocks are rising, leading a rally in European markets as equities look to end four weeks of losses. I want to get some perspective now from John Haynes. He's head of research at Investec Wealth and Investment. Good to see you, John. Thanks very much for coming in. Also, I mean, so far in the morning, stocks have managed to hold on to their gains. Pretty remarkable. I mean, it's very interesting. The situation in Libya has a great deal to do with that, yeah. with the expectations that oil companies like any, like Total, will, will perhaps reap the benefits from accessing the country's uh, oil resources. But when you, when you see a rally like this, fairly early on in the day, do you have much confidence that it will last given the volatility of the past few weeks? I think it's very difficult to call markets in the short term, but I think we've been looking at the glasses um, even more than half empty for, for quite some time now, and in terms of trying to contemplate systemic risks and price them into stocks, clearly markets are having severe difficulty doing that. But I do think uh, central banks and in corporations mm. have, ma have managed to, if you like, uh, demonstrate sub substantial resilience and, and decent activity in the face of what's been very challenging conditions, which has brought us some time to start refocusing on the fundamentals of the current economy. And we might have 9% unemployment in the US. We have 91% employment in the US. We have record levels of corporate profitability. We have a banking system that is much better liquefied in, in much better situation than it was in 2008. And actually, the problems we're dealing with are problems that, if you like, central banks have far greater control over than, than the Lehman's issue in the post-crisis environment. But isn't it then that much more worrying? that none of these things are being reflected in the markets, that there doesn't even be any logic to it then if, if you were to see your argument through? I think perversely in an environment like this nobody knows anything. So if you trust stock prices too much, you're trusting a whole lot of noise. I think what you need to do in terms like this is step back and say to yourself, OK, what, what, shots, what prices are telling me about the longer term? And mm. what they're telling you about the longer term is the US isn't bankrupt. It, has, it borrows for 10 years at 2.1%, which means it's far from out of bullets in dealing with the crisis. They're also telling you that in the Far Eastern markets, things are going reasonably well. They're not as high as they were, but they're certainly a long way away from predicting crisis levels of economic activity. And in, even in the Eurozone, they're telling you that actually the ECB's activity in the 10-year markets in, in Spain and Italy is having some effect. Now, have we solved the problem? No. But have we solved it enough to start refocusing on what is really happening in the economy? I think so. And over the next two, three weeks, we're going to be seeing what extent fear has caused damage in the real economy and if that's substantial then obviously earnings numbers come down and equity prices start to look a little more shaky but if it isn't substantial as i suspect it won't be uh, i suspect people will then focus on decent comparisons for the back half of the year and the fear will recede uh, into a little more greed not outright greed but a little how more. are you supposed to assess risk in this environment I think the, the idea is nobody knows anything and you have to accept that, which means you have to have a very diversified portfolio and you have to avoid gearing to, to underlying assets in your own portfolio. So it is, it is acceptable to have geared instruments in your portfolio, but they better be a small amount and they better be diversified across, across uh, many asset classes. Because one thing is absolutely certain, nobody knows how these events will, will play out. Absolutely nobody. Okay, so it has to be, you know, diversifying the portfolio Absolutely. as much as possible. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. We all know that. But how worried are you by the fact that investors don't seem to be differentiating between weaker companies and then companies with uh, stronger balance sheets uh, whose profit margins are high? I think they are, um, but it's happening in the corporate debt markets rather than the equity okay. markets. And therefore, when, when risk takers come back into the markets, what they'll do is they'll price the equity of corporate debt and they'll start buying those equi equities with strong balance sheets first. So, so the I differentiation think, is happening in the corporate debt market. So does then that, that mean that we could see a bit of a bounce in the equity market sooner rather than later? Or does this high correlation mean that actually we have further to fall? Uh, I've, my, from my perspective, I think we have a nervous uh, third quarter as we, as we see what, to what extent fear has impacted the real world. Thereafter, I think there are significant signs, uh, reasons to hope that the second half will be, or the fourth quarter will be better. I think Japan, uh, demand starts to come back, oil prices going down is a big positive, corporate profits are still high, they might be lower than people hope, but they're very high. Um, I think those are positives that aren't being reflected in the market. All right, big week for Ben Bernanke, Jackson Hole, Wyoming. What are your expectations? What are, what are you focusing on? What does the market want to hear from him? I, I think we're getting to the point where it almost doesn't matter. I think, he, I think just showing willingness to step up to whatever problem is there is good enough. I mean, no, nobody again really understands how, how the, the special measures get through to the markets. QE3, what would it matter? Would it, would it really help? Well, with 
with the 10-year rates at 2.1%. I don't care, frankly. But they seem to be pricing that in, though. Well, they, they might be pricing. Maybe it goes to 2.5%. Yeah. But, but all I'm saying is people are actually buying these assets, not because Ben Bernanke might have QE3, but because they're frightened of everything else. If they be less frightened of anything else, then they'll start buying risk assets again. And just central bankers continually turning up and saying, we will do whatever it takes. Eventually, markets get bored of being frightened start to be greedy again. So I think that's where we are at the moment. It's a case of we're frightened of our own shadows. We can be a little less frightened. Uh, and I think we'll, we'll, if you like, soothe ourselves into an easier end to the year. John, your bottom line is that despite these fundamental concerns about a slowing global economy, we're not going to see a repeat of 2008. You have reason to be optimistic. Yeah, I'm optimistic about that. I think it's in our own hands that we can avoid that kind of a fate. I think what one forgets about is just how much the financial system seized up. And your reporter just now said the Fed was lending $1.2 to a bunch of investment banks. Well, it wasn't doing that because it liked them. It was doing, it was doing that to save, to, save the, to, exactly right. to save the world. You, just before the break, you said that you thought that we'd have uh, some kind of a turnaround in the third quarter going into the fourth quarter it wasn't going to be as bad. But really, France and German growth is on its knees. The UK is barely about to start on, on its recession programme. That's a bit of an optimistic call, isn't it? Is that news to you? I mean, it's not news to me that they're, that they're on their knees. I think uh, it's just a case of relative to expectations. Do I think that our expectations are too low? Yes, I do. And I think they're too low for America particularly. We know that Europe is struggling and it's likely to continue to struggle for some time. Um, but that's not really the motivating force in the world economy and it hasn't been for the past two years. What we need is a soft takeoff in America and a soft well, landing in China. Well, interesting news, John Haynes. Great to talk to you.